Hello. Today I'd like to talk about self-portraiture and the utility of self-portraiture. First things first, it's a great visual diary. Um, I've done a few self-portraits in my time, quite a few, and here are just a few I'll bring on screen. Uh, you can see that not only does the style of painting change, but like how I look, uh, my emotion, you know how good my art is changes it's really nice just to have these as a little collection to look back on and that's something in itself that, that makes self-portraiture worth doing it's really nice especially if you're getting to the point where you're growing older um, to capture some some of your earlier more iconic looks so that's one um, second point is you want to experiment and you don't particularly want to experiment with someone else's face because A, you're less familiar with it and B, that person might get really, really, really insulted if you experiment a bit too hard um, and, you know, mess up their nose or something insane. So it's quite nice to be able to paint and mess about with your own face because there's no stress of making yourself look funny or anything um, because, like... You know, you can be your own guinea pig and you're not going to do anything awfully, awfully wrong. And that's what I've started doing with this. As you can see, I've started with a pencil drawing or, you know, the digital equivalent, which is something that I don't often do. I usually go straight into painting, but I wanted to give it a go um, this time to see how that might affect the final outcome. And if you avoid um, certain methods or not avoid, but you just don't do them very often, I, I recommend you give them a go because... Uh, I think that I think this ended up uh, okay, and that might have something to do with the pencil. I, I don't know, I'll have to try it a lot more to figure out. Um, and another thing that I've done with this that I'll go over in a moment is I've tried to experiment a bit with how I structure my values. Um, because it's something that I just thought I'd mess with. I've been looking at Craig Mullins' work recently and talking to someone about... Um, his work and how he structures his value and I thought I'd give it a go so effectively the way I normally structure my value is um, is just extreme blacks and whites and I'll explain what that means so this is a value scale it goes from 0% black to 100% white um, here they are both the extremes and usually when I work I start at either end and I work in towards a mid-tone and for this painting, I want to switch it around and I wanted to work outwards from a mid-tone. So I wanted to start with this very non-contrasty uh, grey. It's not quite grey. I used a pattern stamp to just get a little bit of texture and colour in there. But you could just start on grey. And I'm just working my way out with a, um, a very low opacity hard round brush. So you'll see that go on in the background. The full painting was about 40 minutes uh, and I split it up by four so it should end up being 10 minutes. It's quite nice. And I can get on to talking about point three of why self-portraiture is an absolutely great idea. Point three is you are familiar with your own face. Or at least you'd hope that you'd be familiar with your own face. Um, you know, you wake up, you brush your teeth, you look at yourself in the mirror. Um, you look at yourself in the reflection of your computer monitor, in your phone, wherever else. Um, so at this point, if you're not familiar with your own face, um, I guess self-portrait is just <laughs> going to help you get familiar with your own face, which is a good thing as well. Um, but when you're studying some kind of Pinterest girl or... You know, whoever else on the internet and you've got no idea who they are they're just a stranger who you found a reference image of the likelihood is that you could get the proportions of their face fairly off without realizing it um, you're not going to be familiar with their face you're not going to be used to seeing it a lot so the difference between the person you're studying's face and the face you draw which might have some facial features you know a millimeter or two off you're not going to notice it uh, that, that greatly. Whereas if you decide to give yourself an absolutely ginormous nose, um, because you're so used to seeing your own face and we all have a pretty good idea of what we look like, um, it should be fairly obvious to you. That's the theory. That's the theory anyway. I say that, but 
I go through this entire painting with uh, one of my eyes too far up and then I, I move it down at the end. Um, and on that note, it's a good point to talk about um, stylizing your own face and maybe dipping your toe into the world of caricatures. Obviously with the familiarity comes a certain level of comfort when it comes to painting your own face and again you have in your head an image of what you look like it might not be perfect and might be distorted depending on you know your self-image your self-confidence that kind of thing but you can use that to your advantage you can play with that i know a lot of people are maybe self-conscious about a certain part of their face it could be fun to take that part and exaggerate it in a portrait and see what it looks like that kind of thing. Um, it might also be reassuring to people if they uh, study from a photo of their own face and they can realize, oh, <laughs> my ears aren't uh, 10 inches long or whatever bizarre uh, physical affect you might have. So I think it's a pretty good idea overall, um, uh, mentally. I, I mean, personally, I've been struggling a little bit recently with um, you know motivation and just something finding something to do with myself I finished my degree now and I just have to wait until I can start my job in August and um, and I've just been kind of twiddling my thumbs sat around so this has really motivated me to, to get back onto the old study grind um, and there's no better place to start than your own face as well Another thing you might notice in this painting that I'll begin to do is play around with a lot of geometric shapes. Um, I've gone back to using the hard round. I had, you know, that's the video that's blown up recently and I had a fair few comments, um, you know, defending the use of textured brushes. I just like to reiterate, I'm not against using textured brushes at all. I love textured brushes. Um, but it's a tradition at this point that I do a lot of my self-portraits with the hard round so that they are easier to compare with one another if I'm trying to look for signs that I've improved with my art or anything like that. Um, but here we are, I begin to experiment with some more sharp geometric shapes that I don't usually use. Another thing you might have noticed is that the first portrait that I brought up a while ago and I might bring it back on screen now is fairly dull. Um, miserable a really great reflection of my personality and they did slowly get um, more jolly but this one I, I really wanted to push that to the extreme um, most of the time when I'm taking photos of myself I, I really do look miserable for some reason I, I can assure you I'm not um, I woke up this morning uh, and I took a photo of myself ready to to paint this and make this video and god I just looked like like I had been slapped in the face by death itself. I really have no idea. So I, I waited um, until the afternoon and took another one and deliberately did a, a silly face. So um, expressions can be a lot easier to study on your own face, I guess. It might be a bit awkward asking your friends to pose for you. And yeah, you could always go to DeviantArt or Pinterest or wherever else they have like reference packs of emotions and stuff. And they can be really great um, with lots of professional photography, but it, it's interesting to me personally, um, like figuring out how my own face distorts uh, and moves and I can more easily pull the expressions that I'm I have in my head. I don't have to think of a specific expression and then go and hunt for a photo. I can just do the expression, take a photo of it myself um, and use it as reference. So there are plenty of benefits is what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, I mean, I'm also making this video because I'd like to announce again that I have a Discord server and invite people to it. I'd also like to announce that I have an Instagram and a Twitch, which you can follow me on both of those. Um, I know that so far a few people have like hopped over to Instagram and hunted down my account, um, which is lovely. And I've really enjoyed being tagged in all of your paintings, especially all the spoons for Spoon June. That's been really nice. So uh, I'd like to thank you guys again. And um, I'm using the community tab on YouTube now as well. And I'm thinking of doing some um, 
some YouTube lives. I've got that. I'm trying to set that up. So if you have any suggestions for other videos you want to see or other features I should be using, like if you want to see live streams, if you want to see um, more speed paints or anything like that, just please leave a comment or um, DM me on Instagram or join the Discord. I have a little suggestion box in my Discord server. I'll link all of that down in the description below. And I, uh, I really hope you've enjoyed this, this wonderful portrait of my face. I'm quite happy with it. Here it is. Um, I'm, I'm pleased at the progression from um, this time last year to now, and I hope that that's kind of reflected in this in this painting. So I hope everyone has a lovely day. I've had lots and lots of lovely comments, and I, I can't thank you all enough. Even all the slightly strange comments that say I should open an ASMR channel. That's that's nice too. Nice to hear. So. Have a have a great day and uh, and I'll catch you in the next one.